Welcome, welcome. For today's video, I'm going to review Leggetti. Leggetti is a 1962 French science fiction featurette directed by Chris Marker. And for those who don't know what a featurette is, it's basically somewhere between a short film and a feature film. For instance, featurettes are too short to be feature films, but are also too long to be short films. Anyways, what makes this featurette stand out, that is constructed almost entirely from still photos. And that's because the footage got fucked during post-production, so the director used still photos and narration to tell his story. So without further ado, let's get into it. And this feature is brought to you by the Criterion Collection, the best at releasing the kind of cinema that will make Martin Scorsese bust a nut. The feature begins at the Orly Airport, where a young boy sees a woman on the observation platform. Then he witnesses a startling incident there. He did not understand exactly what happened, but he knew that he has seen a man die. <sighs> boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Good thing you're in France, at least you can afford therapy. Then World War III happens. What? What the fuck? And yeah, just like that, World War III happens. Why and how? I don't know, but I think the Germans started it. Above ground in Paris, everything was rotten with radioactivity. The victors stood guard over a kingdom of rats. See, what did I tell you? Anyways, the boy grows up to be a man who was a prisoner in the aftermath of World War III. In a post-apocalyptic Paris, the German scientists here research time travel, hoping to send test subjects to different time periods. Now, you may be asking why? This was the purpose of the experiment. To throw emissaries into time, to call past and future to the rescue of the present. Couldn't have said it better myself. However, the scientists are having difficulty finding subjects who can mentally withstand the shock of time travel. The outcome was disappointment for some, death for others, and for others, madness. The scientists eventually settle upon our protagonist because his key to the past is a vague but obsessive memory of his pre-war childhood of the woman he had seen on the observation platform. So basically this guy's high on member berries. Anyways, after several attempts, he reaches the pre-war period. He even meets the woman from his memory and they begin a romantic relationship. For instance, they go on a date on the gardens. They look at the trunk of a sequoia tree, covered with historical dates. He shows her a point beyond the tree, hears himself say, This is where I come from. But then he gets pulled back by the scientists. Well, it turns out the Germans are a bunch of player haters too. Eventually, it turns out that our protagonist here got lucky. Ooh la la. And we get a series of fade-ins of the woman in bed. And this scene. Ugh, now that's a face I don't want to see after raw dogging. And yes, that is the only piece of footage they used for this featurette. Anyways, our pro tag takes the woman to a museum, which not gonna lie looks pretty lit. She welcomes as a natural phenomenon the ways of this visitor who comes and goes, who exists, talks, laughs with her, stops talking, listens to her, then vanishes. Then he returns to the future, and the scientists attempt to send him far into the future, where he meets a technologically enhanced people. He is given a power unit to regenerate his own destroyed society. However, upon his return, he is concerned that he will be executed by his jailers. Luckily, he gets contacted by the people from the future, who offer him help to escape from his timeline permanently. But he asks instead to be returned to the pre-war time of his childhood, hoping to meet the woman again. He is returned to the past and, and placed on the jetty at the airport. And it occurs to him that his child version of himself is probably also there at the same time, but he is more concerned with locating the woman, and he quickly spots her. However, as he rushes to her, he notices an agent has followed him, and we get one hell of a plot twist. He knew there was no way out of time, and he knew that this haunted moment he had been granted to see as a child was the moment of his own death. 
and that was Legetti. The feature has been critically acclaimed over the years. For instance, in 2010, Time ranked Legetti first on its list on top 10 time travel movies. And in 2012, the British Film Institute deemed Legetti as the fifth greatest film of all time. And in 1963, the Prix Jean Vigo awarded Legetti for Best Short Film. And you'll be surprised that this feature was very influential as science fiction writer William Gibson considers the film as one of his main inspirations. And the band Zig Zig Spotnik paid homage to it to their 1989 single, Dancerama. And the feature was one of the influences for the music video of David Bowie's Jump They Said. Furthermore, it was also the inspiration for Terry Gilliam's 12 Monkeys. So with all that, what do I think of it? Well, I liked it very much. The fact that the film is almost entirely made of still photos is pretty unique. And also, its use of time travel is pretty cool too. As normally we think of someone going into a time machine to travel that way. And I like the way every still photo is framed. As it brings to mind the old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. And I couldn't agree more. Also, it does make great use of sound, since it gives the film an eerie feeling. I also find it unsettling that the protagonist's life is just an unending cycle of misery, and the fact that he witnesses his own death. And I gotta give it to its director, Chris Marker, as he really was a genius with this feature. Yeah, this big brain time. So overall, this feature is pretty good, and you can find it for free on YouTube. So I give this feature 5 out of 5 jetties. And that was the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Stay safe out there. Goodbye. Yeah. And this was the end of the first experiment.